Hey everybody, how you doing? Good morning. This is Jeep Serial Composer here at the D Composer Lounge. It's Friday, the beginning of a weekend. Super, super busy week for me, man. Just had a crazy time on, on, on Twitch this week. Uh, I learned how to play Minecraft. It's, it's bizarre. I, I even did my first one up on Twitch. <laughs> and, um, you know, having people on Twitch guide me through, that's been a blast. But the other thing is, though, is that uh, I have been going through my Patreon list and I've got so much metal I've got to catch up on too. So uh, this obviously from Periphery was not on that list. Obviously Periphery comes out with a, a new track. My comments start to blow up. And then I watch everybody do reactions. I don't watch their reactions. I was like, oh God, I'm, everybody's jumping on it. And I don't want to be that guy to jump on it because it's out right now. I want to you know, let it marinate a little bit, you know? And so that being said, I'm here to do uh, Periphery Atropos. I believe that's how you um, pronounce it. Now, you guys know that I did do that podcast with Misha Mansour. And it was, more of a, it was more of a musician geek out session than talking about Periphery, if you didn't see. It's really fun. I'll put the link up at the end of this video, so if you want to check it out. But I do look forward to this because of, you know, um, <clears throat> the super progressive you know, a composition and arrangements and performance that these, these musicians are about. So I don't want to, I don't want to get pre, you know, googly over this because I haven't heard it yet. So I've got to get my head into it. But I want to thank you guys so much for your support uh, on Patreon. I do Patreonathons now. You can check that out. You want to support me there or buy me a cup of coffee, the headsets, all the links are down below. So uh, let's do this. This is um, Periphery's latest release and it is called Atropos. All right. to unwrap here but without going too deep in this first stop I just you know the the rhythmic the, there there's there is a sense of, of chaotic um, uh, energy coming out of this uh, by virtue of the ryth rhythmical arrangement on this <clears throat> at the very beginning the open chugs are on one note they're you know they're not all over the place being playing you know a gigantic riff that's moving and, and I think it's because they were prepping us for other super sick stuff that was coming through here. So <clears throat> nice little meter change. There's, there's a couple times where you probably saw me smile. I was going, oh, these guys, you know, they're having a blast. But where I really started to kind of, kind of glow a little bit is when the vocals came in, if you listen to those really subtle chord changes in the back. So the chug <clears throat> is staying on, I would, I would consider it the, the root of these little chord changes that are happening in the back, but they are kind of, <clears throat> they kind of call out to kind of uh, very unique interval um, chord changes that are happening there that are pushing a little bit of that prog fusion kind of sound, that vibe that's going on. It's very subtle, 
but because of where it's placed in the mix and what's supporting it, maybe there's a little bit of a tailed reverb off of it and stuff like that. It's given us this ambient glide through it that I really love when that energy pulls. You've got the heaviness and the darkness of the chugging, but yet you've got this kind of glassy chord changes that are happening in the back. While this is, you know, I'm not really watching the video that much, but it seems to be a very intense video and stuff. Now, we have the vocalist that comes in <clears throat> that has this incredible you know, uh, talent to go as clean and as just super chill voice to getting into what we just heard, the intense uh, growling, you know, darker part of his voice. But once again, like the first track that I heard off the same project, um, the background vocals are so freaking tight. And they're so unique because the, the background vocals are in what I would call a, a, a kind of a cluster composition. So instead of the intervals being wide, within its possibility of doing it, you know, the vocals, uh, the background vocals, they've got them all choked up in here. So, you know, a second, the fourth, the ninth, if you're a musician, you know what I'm talking about. They're all within a grouping that's very close to each other and it's not spread out. And it sounds so sick. Now we get back in, uh, and, and then they also get into the hook. <clears throat> now it's like going, wow, these guys really kind of formulated something that they, they did the within it, uh, if you're in it to a minute to win it kind of hook thing. They already got you soaked into the hook. Now we just got back out of that section. They gave us a little bit of the people's elbow when they be, where they got really dark and chuggy again, and then the vocalist went into that dark screaming section. But now <coughs> we just went into a um, little more of a synth part of the composition, a little more ambient and, and uh, ethereal. You know, the drums are still going off and everything, but then the chugs just dropped out. So let me go back a little bit and um, let's continue on. I do love that. <laughs> say it a thousand times you know when musicians and bands get really nice and you know um, roaming candle explosions you know with uh, the chuggy riffs and stuff like that what lights it up for me not so much is the dun, dun, you know go on forever doing that it's the hat that squares it off for me that gives like us normal people <laughs> that zip line to hang on to. 
I mean, yes, I get it and everything like that, but even as a musician, as a composer, and whatever the case is, you know, I hear what's happening, but my internal joy, and where that really becomes powerful, a chug like that, is when that hi-hat's coming in on the floor. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's that Rosanna thing, it's that Precaro thing, it's that, you know, um, the melody that was just playing behind it with the guitar, you know, what I love about what I'm hearing is they are definitely keeping the element of ambiance in this track, you know, and the, and, and not the tonal dissonance, but the sonic dissonance, the experience between the dark and the heaviness uh, and the harshness of it, yet they give us this little, it, it's always got like know, some sonic WD-40 <laughs> that gets us through th these sessions with these really great <coughs> ambient effects. So on that last little section I just heard, there's a, a, a chill melody being played by the lead. But listen, it has a really nice reverb on it, you know. And then something else that I didn't mention, and you saw me going, oh, I like that, or when I said that, is that arpeggiation that the guitar player, I don't know which one of them was doing it, but that the guitar player was doing super clean. But what I love about it is it is also somewhat um, mimicked, not identical, but there's these little uh, synth arpeggiations that are going on. And also on top of that, the synth, there's a little bit of synth lead work that flares in and out. So pushing the envelope of this kind of composition is, is right up my alley. It's mind-numbing uh, in the sense that the energy that I'm pulling from it is that tug of war of what I think, you know, today's energy uh, is kind of going towards in metal, in some metal, not all, in some. Uh, but the power of this kind of tug of war between glide and catastrophe <laughs> is is what I feel here. That's really super sick. Stop there, man. Um, but I, I had said it earlier, but it, be, it was more emphasized now. Is you hear that that sequence that's happening? You hear me? You saw me going, dee, 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 dee. <clears throat> and it's an arpeggiation. However, it is. It's a da, 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 so it could be. You know, they're holding down one note, but the arpeggi arpeggiation is pinging it. But what was sick about this is that that arpeggiation is in it seemingly in a particular key. And they're letting, it, they're letting it sit there and glide, and all of the really dark, heavy, half-step weirdness that was happening on the bottom end with the chugs just made you feel like really super uncomfortable. Well, once again, the, the feeling I'm getting about this whole thing is that there's that, like, that, you know, heroic destitute, that, that, that complete left and right energy of, like, you know, could it be, but holding it down. And I'm looking, now I've watched a little bit of the video, so there's a lot of exploding and, and cities burning and stuff, so maybe the story ties in, I'm not too sure. But um, 
there were some half step walking down with the chugs that were uh, really offsetting. But what really set me off was that, I, I don't know if there's the right term that you call the, that blast beat the drummer was doing, that thing. It was, it felt slightly off. And by no stretch of the imaginations are any of these musicians ever off. But in a, in a production decision to kind of leave you feeling kind of unpinned, you know, uh, in that little section, the, the emotional feeling was like an unpinning. And it was kind of like, are they going to catch up or is it going to catch up? It really left you kind of like, you know, if that was the intention, I don't know if I'm wrong. And, um, but it, it was just very kind of, ah. And then, of course, once they tighten it up again, then it relights up. But I, I did want to kind of bring up that, you know, there's that arpeggiation that was happening there. I, I just love that integration. I don't know how to say this, but that was that was beautifully cringeworthy. Those chord changes there. <laughs> you see me starting to have these like physical contortions. You know what it's all about. If you're a musician, you know what I'm talking about. There's some chord changes that make you go. Oh. It was really funny. I mean, they surprised us on the last track that I did with that little jazz fusion uh, section in there that was thrown in. In this case, they just went kind of like Bloodborne on me um, and the video game. And um, actually. Uh, Mission and I talked a little bit about that, uh, about the video game world as well in that podcast. I got to tell you, the one thing that is working for me, and this is sometimes why I usually don't like to watch the, the video, but <clears throat> in this case, uh, because I just like to listen to the music and I like to kind of like my own theater to the mind. But what was really kind of, um, first of all, the video was insane. Um, I've, I've heard, you know, people talking about the AI videos or the trendy -ish things or trendy things or whatever. I'm not familiar with any of that. <clears throat> but the video was intense. Really, really super intense. Cyberpunky heaviness. I don't even know if cyberpunk... Well, you guess, now somebody's going to come for me going, how can you say that? It's not cyberpunk. But um, it, it was score-worthy. The track was score-worthy. And the changes that they did with their compositions and the heaviness matching, of course, you know, with, with the video or, or I guess the video director matching with the music. Uh, just sewed it all up 100% to me. I will say though that at the beginning of the track is where I felt the most hooked 
uh, the two times that they came in, you know, within about a minute and a half to a minute 40 seconds with the hook. And then it starts to meander into more instrumental, powerful pieces. And it takes us through this theater of the mind kind of vibe, you know, to each his own, whatever it is you're thinking while you're driving or, or doing what you're doing when you're listening to this track. But it has that. And it has those powerful elements that uh, I've been really enjoying in the last few months of a lot of... Um, uh, types of productions throughout the metal world that have really emphasized that ethereal ambient kind of integration. And for me, it's just my own personal thing. I just, I, for some reason, I've always, my whole life as a composer, and especially as a media composer, I have to create an ambiance. It could be ethereal, it could be dark, it could be heavy, but it's about that. So my ears automatically tag into the trigger, trigger mechanism for me to cause thought process and creativity in here with images. I know that sounded kind of mushroomy, but pff, so. <laughs> That's what it was. Anyhow, this was really long uh, video, and I'm glad you guys are still uh, here to hang out. If What's my favorite saying? If you're still here, type in, I'm still here. Um, if you want to watch uh, the podcast that I did do with Misha, um, it's going to come up at the end uh, here at the video. Um, I want to thank you guys for your support. Like usual, the cup of coffee, the headsets. Check me out on Twitch. Watch me get die mega times on Minecraft. A guy with the arrow, man. That guy comes out of nowhere. Anyhow, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. You guys have a great weekend. All right. <laughs>